So, last time you saw me actually get the machine put together and run the sample file that comes with the installation. And that was my very first machined thing ever, but that was the sample file. I've got this tradition where I like to make an octopus with every new tool that I'm learning. And so I decided to make an octopus on the mill. And I ended up with this. Now the path from nothing to this little simple octopus was a lot windier and curvier than it should have been. And I'm gonna take you through that curvy road from then to now, so you can see how I made this octopus. I started with this really simple design, very similar to what I finished up with, but I didn't have any end mills small enough to do it in a reasonable amount of time. So I blew the file up real big and that was gonna take like six or seven hours. So I scrapped it and went a different route and ordered some tiny end mills. And I figured since I had some tiny end mills, then I could do like this really cool uh, raised relief octopus sculpt. So I started in um, mesh mixer and I sculpted up this octopus and then I took it into Fusion 360. I learned a valuable lesson here and that's that Fusion does not like to convert surfaces that have too many polygons. So I had to reduce this down to 10,000 polygons. That seems to be the magic number. So I took this file into Fusion and I set up a cam workspace for it. Now I should take a moment here to explain the real process that I do. I pretty much just go back and forth between uh, NYC CNC's YouTube channel and Fusion 360 trying different things. Check out John's channel, that's NYCNC on YouTube. So much good stuff here and it's really getting me through all of this uh, step by step. So I would watch videos that John put out, uh, John Saunders, and he talks about the different end mills and the different types of uh, tool paths and stuff. And really I just kind of explored for a while. Here you can see me trying many, many different ways of doing these tool paths, different size end mills, different types of tool paths, uh, and experimenting with different um, feed rates and step overs. And it looked like it was gonna be really cool. What I was trying to do was reduce the amount of time that it was going to take to do this job because already I was seeing that anything that was going to produce a decent high resolution surface finish was really taking a considerable amount of time. Uh, I also had to set up my tool library a bit for these new end mills that I had purchased and that took some trial and error because I really didn't understand how the uh, Fusion tool library connected to the Pathpilot tool library. And again, another one of John's videos kind of explained it. So, you know, back and forth between NYC CNC and Fusion 360, figuring out what I was going to do. And really, watching these toolpaths generate is just mesmerizing. And here we can see the simulation. This is showing uh, the first pass and then the second pass. And then I went in and added a third pass for high detail. So, first pass, second pass. And then here's the third pass. Um, a morphed spiral and here we see the, the full thing for this final final version what I ended up with um, playing around was oh here you can see me experimenting with the morphed spiral for high resolution surface so I ended up with the first pass rough the second pass 3d adaptive um, roughing and then a morphed spiral for high resolution and then when I looked at the machine times this was gonna be again six and a half hours or more of machine time and I just didn't want to mess with it. This was just so I could say I did an octopus. Uh, I had no use for this. So anyway, I went back to the simpler file and here's my end mill. I don't know about you, but I look at that and I imagine it's just going to shatter whenever it hits the aluminum because I don't know what I'm doing. So I started on wood. I figured that was safer. Uh, at least, you know, I could get my octopus done and say that I did an octopus uh, before destroying my end mill because I don't know what I'm doing. So I did it in wood, and it turned out pretty good. I thought it looked pretty. So I bit the bullet, and I threw in some aluminum, and figured I would give it a try. And it turned out pretty well.
Now, I was being very conservative with my speeds and feeds, but I had watched um, John's videos where he talks about, you know, you do want chips. You don't want it to just rub that off. So I was happy to see that there were actual chips being made and I just, I don't have the cooling on. I was just blowing this by uh, hand with a little sprayer. That was one of the lessons I learned in this cold temperature is between 20 and 30 degrees this weekend whenever I was messing with this. And in that cold temperature, my air system doesn't, it's not happy about it. The valves stick open, it's really noisy. I mean, everything works, it just wants to stick open. Didn't affect the machining though. And there you go. Here was that final aluminum machine part and the end mill was not destroyed. So that's it. I mean, here it is. This is the final thing. And I think it looks really cool. I'm happy with the with what I got out of it for the very first thing machine. This isn't bad, um, I think. Now I just need to start on a big project and learn how to really use this machine. So I'll see you next time. <laughs>